In all the excitement on my trip, I forgot to do my Apple 2022 predictions, of course, which we'll be reacting to in 2023. We're at the very, very end of 2022, so, uh, hey, Drew, uh, what's it like out there? How's the... How's life going? But yeah, essentially we have lots of different subjects to cover across tons of different product categories, so without further ado, let's begin. Probably address first things first and just talk about what's probably the most exciting part of 2022 with Apple, and I think once again, it's probably still going to be Apple Silicon in more and more Macs. What's different about 2022 though, even though we've seen Apple Silicon get really fast with the M1 and even faster with M1 Pro and M1 Max, is that we should finally see what Apple can do with their architecture unleashed. You know, every single chip we've seen has been very, very impressive, but Apple has always had to find a way to stuff it into a laptop, and I think that has always meant power efficiency is prioritized and that means they can't make the CPUs and GPUs as crazy fast as they could if it was just in a dedicated desktop tower and that's what the Mac Pro is supposed to be. I mean they might prioritize power efficiency a little bit but the only winning argument you're gonna have there is like oh uh, this is a little bit less on your power bill and this is so power efficient it means we can put it into a smaller form factor I guess which some people would like but I know there's a ton of PCs guys out there and Mac people too that are just in favor of having the biggest computer possible because big computer means fast powerful some people don't even want efficiency if it was offered to them just because they want something that can soak up every last watt and turn that into a really really powerful Mac that can export all of their highly intensive 8k video and all that but still there's more to come with Apple Silicon and knowing that we haven't reached the full potential yet does get me excited so of course in March we're looking at iMac Pro which which will likely be rocking M1 Pro or M1 Max. And then sometime in the summer, maybe even later in the fall, we'll see a redesigned Mac Pro with Apple Silicon that doesn't have to be put into a laptop at any time soon. That's certainly one of the most interesting things in my view, just because we've never seen Apple designing silicon for a Mac that big. But of course, there's other things to talk about as well. For my own personal uses, I'm very excited to see a refreshed Pro Display XDR because I've been using my MacBook Pro a lot and it's fantastic. But when I am at home at the desk, I would like a larger screen to edit all my videos on, plus when I'm doing live streaming and stuff, having more space for the chat and OBS. And all those windows I'm going to be managing would breathe so much better if it wasn't on a little 16-inch display, even though that's as big as Apple's mobile displays get. It's definitely nowhere near as big as the 27-inch iMac Pro I was used to using. So 120 hertz on a Pro display that's half the price, certainly up there, and I'm excited for that. Although if I have to go down my predictions route, I'm probably going to be disappointed with this just because I was so disappointed with the last standalone monitor. Wouldn't be shocked if it ends up costing closer to three, four thousand dollars. Maybe it doesn't go down in price at all. They just include a stand now and it's still five grand, in which case, cool, I'm sure the refresh rate in XDR will be nice, but not for me. And of course, a lot of people are still excited for the M2 MacBook Air because this is the first time the MacBook Air is getting some kind of chassis redesign since 2018, which doesn't sound like that long ago until you realize we're going to hit the four year mark on that soon. So seeing MacBooks get even thinner and lighter and how Apple would design a laptop from the ground up if they knew they didn't have to put any fans in it and they had complete control over the thermal architecture. That should be pretty interesting. I'm actually going to go out on a limb and predict that it will have black bezels and a notch and the white bezel rumor ends up just not working. It's just all of the logic Apple has applied to the 24 inch iMac having white bezels. It's all about like fitting in with the living room or fitting in with the kitchen with the white backdrops and the white walls with drywall and all that. And I just don't think that same argument is going to hold up as well in the MacBook Air territory. And that's why Apple has ditched white bezels across the entire iPad lineup. Now, even the silver budget iPad has black bezels. So this argument that the cheap lower tier Macs should have white bezels doesn't really line up with the iPad design scheme. So a notch, yes, just like the MacBook Pros because this new MacBook Air is supposed to have mini LED, but still 60 Hertz. And the M2 chip will mostly be a boost in graphics, not too much a boost in actual CPU performance, which will be fine because the M1 in terms of like fan laptop designs is still pretty much untouched in regards to performance per watt and I think Apple knows that. Of course we might also get a refreshed 13 inch MacBook Pro or maybe just a skim down 14 inch MacBook Pro. I still expect that to come out in the third or fourth quarter so we've got a ways to go till then but yes I don't think it will have the touch bar. It will probably have the M2 chip so the M1 Pro will still be entry price of $2,000 unless maybe in the next couple months Apple launches a Mac Mini possibly that's a 
$500 or more that starts with the M1 Pro and maybe you can spec it out to an M1 Max. That would be awesome. I know a ton of people would buy that, but I'm not counting on it because I think Apple knows the Mac Mini would sell way too well and that's why they're prioritizing the iMac Pro to come out first and maybe the Mac Mini at the very end of the year. But if Apple is planning on refreshing the entry-level MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, those were launched at the end of 2020 with the M1 Mac Mini. So if Apple wants some consistency with these launch cycles, it would probably launch the M2 or M1 Pro Mac Mini along with those MacBooks as well. In regards to iPads, I think it actually should be kind of a stale year. I mean, we got the iPad Mini 6 and iPad Minis, unfortunately, are not refreshed annually. But we do get budget iPads every year. I feel like every single year that goes by, I'm like, maybe this year they'll give it a laminated display and then they don't do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and taper my expectations and say the next generation budget iPad will still have a non-laminated display, but we'll get another random CPU boost and maybe some camera updates here and there for higher megapixel count and that kind of thing. But I've been feeling that non-laminated display process is what is able to make that iPad so cheap. And every time they try to design it in a laminated way, it just doesn't work. They can't get it under that price point. So iPad Air 5, however, that's something very, very likely to come out in 2022. But it sounds like all rumors as of lately of OLED iPads have been pushed back. So Apple still wants to eventually switch to OLED on iPads, but it's not going to be in 2022, which means the iPad Air 5 sadly will probably still have that same 10.9 inch LCD display, but it will likely just be caught up with the rest of the iPad lineup. So center stage, 5G support for those who care about that type of thing. Maybe a handful of new color options that kind of match the iPad mini 6. Ooh, starlight now. And of course, center stage, which it still really, really bugs me that they can't put that on the iPad Air when they've already put it on the budget iPad. Makes no sense. It's only a matter of time. Of course, center stage is coming to the iPad Air 5. Probably throw in an A13 chip or better in there, just so it's kind of more up to date with the iPad mini as well as the flash. Not sure why the iPad mini deserves the flash and the iPad Air 5 doesn't, but maybe Apple knows people are trying to use the iPad mini as a phone and stuffing it in their pockets sometimes. So it's a stupid reason, but that might be what it is. If the iPad Air 5 doesn't have flash, we'll know that's what Apple's going for. Also, if iPad Pro launch cycles line up like they used to, we should technically be getting new iPad Pros by the end of this year. I'm just very confused as to what their plans are for them. Like maybe bringing mini LED to the 11 inch model and perhaps throwing in the M2 chip because of course the M1 chip is just way too slow for iPad OS. But aside from that, I really can't think of much else they can do. I mean, there was talks of them adopting OLED displays, but those have now again been pushed back. They could update the cameras a little bit to kind of match the performance that the iPhone 13 cameras are rocking, but cameras on iPads, everyone agrees is somewhat overkill and unnecessary, but still I'm kind of like, if you're not going to give iPad OS any pro apps or any Mac functionality, then I guess crazy overkill hardware is kind of the only direction the iPad Pro can go in. Ehrman's talked about giving it glass backs with wireless charging and reverse wireless charging, but with the use of the Magic Keyboard case, I'm really unsure of how wireless charging is supposed to work comfortably with iPads. So I don't think glass backs are going to be that good of an upgrade feature, unless maybe there's some design overhaul with the chassis where we're going to get thinner bezels and more modern approach to iPad Pro somehow. You know, at the end of the day, between my iPhone, my watch, and my MacBook, the iPad Pro now has the thickest bezels. So maybe if we're going to continue this war on bezels, that's the direction Apple needs to go in. As far as iPhones go, we should be starting off the year with quite a boring upgrade because the iPhone SE third generation is going to basically just have an A15 chip and 5G and really nothing else. No upgrades to the camera, no upgrades to the display, the design. There haven't even really been reports if it's going to adopt MagSafe or not, which at this point, Apple launching an iPhone in 2022 without MagSafe sounds bizarre. So I'm still going to predict that they will adopt MagSafe somehow on this dated design. That way they can upsell you on a battery pack if the 5G drains your battery because the capacity on the SE is already really, really tiny. It will basically be the boring upgrade that's just for like people who want an iPhone and they don't really care about any of the hardware. They just want the cheapest possible iPhone that's also new. They don't want to buy refurbished or used for some reason. With the iPhone 14 lineup, there's a lot of things up in the air right now. I mean, from Dylan, leaks right now are suggesting that we're going to get like a pill-shaped camera cutout instead of a hole punch camera. I'm not really sure if it's going to be because Apple wants an additional sensor within that cutout, or is Apple actually just trying to differentiate themselves from all the Android phones, which basically most of them already have hole punch cameras that are centered. So if the iPhone 
everyone does that, it kind of blends in with the crowd and doesn't stand out as much anymore. I feel like that's kind of the inevitable future of smartphones anyway, but maybe Apple adopting the pill shape could let them use one face ID sensor that maybe doesn't work too well underneath the OLED display. So having the pill shape enables them to retain the reliability of face ID and have something that kind of makes them stand apart from everybody else. It's probably too early to predict, but I'm going to guess the pill shaped camera hole will happen on the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max, and Apple will probably keep the notch for the 14 and 14 Max. So yeah, no mini iPhone this year. It's rumored to just be 6.1 inches for the small phones and 6.7 inches for Pro Max and a non-Pro iPhone that just happens to have a larger display. And I'm hoping that comes with a bigger battery as well, because I think that's the primary reason a lot of people end up going with the Pro Max phones is just because they want that better battery. It's not necessarily all about camera. So I think those rumors are going to end up being true. Unfortunately, as much as I want Apple to adopt USB-C, they're probably going to stick with Lightning again, which I think is a mistake. I think it's a missed opportunity, but that's just what I'm predicting here from the get-go. Of course, the A16 chip will be a decent amount faster than the A15 chip, and that will allow them to do cinematic mode at 4K at 60, probably ProRes 4K at 60 as well. So yeah, expect one terabyte iPhones to maybe get more popular when your phone starts recording things and taking up 12 gigs per minute. That's going to need a lot of space, not to mention a very, very high write speed. As far as the Apple Watch lineup goes, I think it might be kind of interesting. We're rumored to get like three new versions all at once. So one is supposed to be an update to the Apple Watch SE. One is supposed to just be a spec bump, you know, like the one we didn't get last year. And alongside that, a more rugged, durable version, which might end up being that squared off design that we heard so much about in 2021. Maybe that's going to find its way into kind of an uglier but stronger Apple Watch that can be used for rigorous activities like rock climbing and it's shock resistant and you can take it super deep in salt water and that type of thing. I don't know how you can make it much more durable than my Series 7 because I've been swimming in the ocean a lot with this thing and it's still holding up fine. But several analysts are still saying they expect a rugged Apple Watch of some kind in 2022. So Apple kind of diversifying the spectrum of watches is going to be interesting. And let's really, really hope 2022 is the year the Series 3 dies. It should have been killed off a long, long time ago. And for some reason, it's still freaking here. I don't get it. We don't need to sell this anymore, Apple. Or if you are going to sell it, sell it for like 99 bucks instead of 199. That's just crazy. I'm hoping that the updated Apple Watch SE could also get a price reduction. If that design started at 199, oh, that would be just perfect for the lineup. Just another nail in the coffin for smartwatches that aren't made by Apple. And then with the Series 8 itself, I expect more health sensors and CPU and GPU upgrades because of course it kind of repackaged the S6 chip last year. So I'm anticipating a body temperature sensor as well as blood pressure monitoring because that seems to be doable in other smartwatches and something Apple's clearly been working on through patents and it's only a matter of time before Apple adopts it with the Series 8. But as far as overall design, I do think the Series 8 will basically look the same as the Series 7. And again, the only big design change you'll notice is with that rugged version, which might be using different materials than aluminum and steel and titanium, but I do think it'll look inherently kind of ugly, but people will be okay with that because it's so durable. As far as AirPods go, you know, we just got AirPods 3, so I don't think we're going to get an update to that anytime soon, but AirPods Pro haven't been updated since 2019, which means we're going to come up on a three-year mark later this year, and there actually have been quite a bit of rumors about AirPods Pro coming out in the fourth quarter, which could possibly be rocking lossless audio playback, hopefully better battery life, and thanks to Mac rumors, an external speaker on the charge case so you can ping it and find out where they went if you lose them, which I think is pretty cool because I'm thinking about upgrading my AirPods at some point. And I'm really, really hoping they prioritize battery life here because my most frustrating thing with buying all these AirPods over the years is those little batteries are tiny. So they get so many cycles on them and they degrade so quickly that you have to upgrade them every so often. You can't really hold on to them as long as you hold on to a phone or an iPad or a Mac. So if they had really good battery life, you could probably extend the lifespan of those AirPods quite a bit. And that's possibly why I would really like it if Apple fixed all of my issues with AirPods Max, you know, give it USB-C and a decent case. But unfortunately, uh, there's no rumors or reports about AirPods Max getting any kind of update this year, which bums me out. I do have to say, I kind of believe it. I feel like if there was something in the works for AirPods Max, they probably would have come up in the news or leakers would be talking about them around now, but also no rumors or leaks about updated HomePods either. So no update to the HomePod mini or the original HomePod, which is a shame because I think that there's room in the lineup for something bigger and better than the HomePod mini. It's just as we've seen in the smart speaker market, if you do something higher end than $99, then it better have a display of some kind, right? It better be like
like a hub with a screen that can play videos and you can do video calls off of it or look at security cameras around the house. So a home hub Apple could make that has like, you know, an iPad like screen on it, but it's connected to a HomePod that's running a modified version of tvOS that I could see selling for $200, $300 and probably finding a decent market. But the rumors on that product have gone fairly quiet. So I'm not sure if I should predict that is actually going to happen. Just to be safe, I'm going to say no HomePods this year, no AirPods Max refresh of any kind. Maybe if we're lucky, a price reduction if they have a surplus of these things. But overall, I wouldn't expect too much in the AirPods department apart from AirPods Pro, which should hopefully be like the best value for active noise canceling headphones within Apple's lineup. Are there other things you guys are predicting for 2022 other than this AR headset everyone can't shut up about? I still personally have a hard time understanding how Apple, who doesn't care much about VR in the past few years, is suddenly going to change their market into releasing like a $3,000 headset that's mostly good for living room demos and you're not going to be able to wear it, you know, fashionably in public because it's not glasses. It's a full-on headset that's going to need a 96 watt power adapter and an M1 or M2 chip inside. It sounds interesting, but I really have a hard time seeing how Apple could release that and pitch it within their market when they clearly care so little about VR and AR can only do so much when it's such a big bulky headset that you're not going to be able to wear with you around in public. AR glasses? I see a lot of potential there, but the headset? I don't really know where the market can go for that. So I'm going to predict all of these rumors on the headset end up being bust and we don't see an AR product from Apple in 2022. But what do you guys think? Feel free to tell me what you think is wrong. How wrong was I, future Drew? And how's the Tesla? I hope you're enjoying it. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you all in the next one.